guys, my name is Jamie and I am the face behind the blog, So Much Better With Age. I first started my blog in 2010 and it's 2019 and this is my first video. Okay, so today we're going to learn how to paint furniture. It's something that I've done since I was 17 and I'm going to use this basic chair, so let's get started. We're going to actually be painting it and reupholstering the seat in another video. Um, and before you paint anything, you're going to have to take hardware off. So if you have a dresser, you're going to have to take all the hardware off the dresser and we're going to do this chair. So we're going to take the seat off the chair first. This is a paper thin chair. Who would want to sit on that? We're going to recover that. You want to see if there's any parts that need filling in with wood filler. There's a bunch of chips and grooves. You don't have to fill them in, but if you do want to fill these in, I use something like this wood filler and a scraper, and you can just fill them in like this. I would let it dry and then sand it when it's dry. I'm not really gonna fill these gaps right now. I don't think they're that deep and it's um, it's just a old chair, so I think paint will cover quite a bit. But if it is quite deep and like a gouge, I would fill it. Next, you're just gonna give it all a general light sanding. It's quite glossy and you wanna get rid of that no matter what kind of paint you're using. So I just use a sanding spray sponge and I just give it a quick sand everywhere. Okay, now that you've done a quick sand, you want to make sure your chair, your piece of furniture is free of dust, any kind of cobwebs, that sort of thing. You can use a damp cloth. Or I just like to use baby wipes. Okay, now that you got the prep out of the way, I always prime my pieces of furniture, whether I'm using acrylic paint, chalk paint, any kind of paint that's on the market. It's all in the prep. If you don't prep it properly, you will spend hours painting it, and if you chip it slightly with a nail, it will come off. So it's all in the preparation, so even though this looks really tedious and not fun, I promise you this is the most important part. Get some primer, this is my favorite one, and prime the whole thing, and I will show you how to do that. We're just gonna use a very little amount of paint throughout, and start painting along with the group of the wood. Okay, I think we're done. You want to make sure you go around after and make sure there are no drips. Um, the first coat of primer never looks pretty, but it's really important to make sure there are no drips and to get into all the little cracks and crevices, which is why I use a sash brush, which means it has an angle on the top. Any kind of sash brush will do. And you just wanna make sure you're getting into all those little corners. Now, if you're painting a piece of furniture that's like a dresser, you're gonna go around and do all the little pieces, corners, cracks, and then you can roll it. But for this chair, uh, for the primer, I just said that using a paintbrush. Make sure you get into all the little grooves. And because we're putting a seat, finished seat back on it, we don't know how much of it will be showing, so just make sure to get all the little corners because you don't want any of that wood showing. And you want to inspect it from all different areas. Now, this primer is almost already dry. You put it on really thick, 
and it dries pretty fast. But I already have a matching chair that's already done. Okay, you want to let it dry for a good hour, even though it feels dry, it's already almost feeling dry. I would save it for a good hour before you paint again. So now that we have our chair primed and ready to go, I'm going to tell you a little bit of the paint I use. I generally love to use this product called Fusion Mineral Paint, and mostly because it's a Canadian brand and I'm Canadian, I love supporting small businesses, but also because it's just pretty awesome. It's an acrylic paint, but it goes on like chalk paint. So it has the benefits of chalk paint, but it goes on really smooth. Everybody loves chalk paint. It's quite pricey. You can still use chalk paint. The only difference between an acrylic and a chalk paint is that it's like there's a sand and grout in it. It makes it adhere to furniture better. But because I do all this prep, it really doesn't matter. And you can use no prep when you're painting with chalk paint. If it's a really glossy piece of furniture, sometimes paint just doesn't stick no matter what if you're using a chalk paint or acrylic. So I always like to prep. I've had furniture that sheets of paint have just stripped right off because I haven't prepped it properly. So I just love to take this time and then it doesn't matter what kind of paint you use. You can also use a general acrylic paint from the paint store that you put your own paint color in. So many choices out there. As long as you're doing the prep ahead of time, it really doesn't matter. But because I love this color and I use it all the time, I'm going to show you how I paint with this paint. I use a paintbrush and I also use a roller because I don't like to see paintbrush marks. I do the same thing with the cracks and crevices, paint with the grain, with the grooves, <laughs> and I use a sash brush first and then I go over everything with the roller. I have another sash brush. I have many of these so that I don't have to wash in between coats of paint. So I already have one ready to go. And I also just want to tell you what I use for rolling paint. I have a bunch of these little trusty a tray and roller. It comes as a set. And I love these microfiber plus any kind of microfiber small roller, 10 millimeters it says. If you don't want to spend this much money, it's not really that much money, but I know that the lower priced ones are these foam brushes. And these ones do just as fine as well. But to get that professional painted look, these fuzzy soft microfiber rollers, they go on like butter. Okay, you wanna do one final walk through, make sure there are no drips. And this is the point where you have to put your paintbrush down. It starts to get really blotchy when it starts to dry. And because we did this section first, it's already starting to dry and you feel like you want to rub over it again with the roller, don't, because that, it'll mess it up. You'll get all the weird bumps and marks. So if you can tell it's not wet looking, it's starting to dry. Even though it looks really patchy, you gotta leave it. I tend to use really thin paint coats two or three coats of this paint that I'm going to use rather than one thick coat. You have to think of it like your nails when you're getting a manicure pedicure. The more thin coats, the better. It'll last longer, it'll keep it strong. And so now we're going to wait for this to dry. This paint dries quite quickly as well. I would say to let it dry at least an hour to two to three. The longer you can let it dry between coats, the better. And then we are going to let it dry and we're going to come back with one or two more coats of paint, probably two. So that's it. I think you can handle it, right? And how did I do for my first video? Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and put on your notifications for the next time my next video is up. Tell me what you think in the comments below and tell me what your paint experience has been. Do you want to see more of these? Do you have problems that you need to fix that you don't know what to do with? I'll be doing another video on how to reupholster a seat so that we have a finished product to show you with your chair.